Okay, welcome back. So you can see I did a little work while we took a break and some things that I worked on were creating lines. So to create a line, you would go to the straight line tool right here. It looks like a straight line and you can drag that and notice how it can go off center, you know, angle a little bit. Holding down the shift key, so when I hit the shift key, it straightens it out. And then you can go up and pick a color, being the outside. Um, you can use the picker. And then you can change the stroke width. One of the things that Illustrator has that you don't find in InDesign is, let me um, zoom in here a little bit so you can see this better. Um, in InDesign, we have all of these where you can make a rounder point, make it bigger, um, and you can change, in Illustrator, you can change it to a dashed line, and then your dash, you could make it um, different increments between each dash, so you can make it your regular. You can just put all these different numbers in there, and you see how it changes it. Um, the other thing is you can add arrowheads. So here's the start, and then here it might be a double arrow, or if you keep scrolling down, it might be a circle that you want on the end. Um, you can, I'm going to undash that line. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do with strokes here that you can't do in InDesign. In InDesign. You can't make the arrows in InDesign. Um, and that's partly because Illustrator is used more for elevations and different things that are compatible with the vector graphics that you'll be doing in your other classes. So that's how you make a line. Um, I also started playing against the grid. So you see here I have aligned all my words, oops, almost, all of my words with the grid here so this line and all of these words are aligning but i thought it'd be interesting to have the end of it expand a little bit and then i have my paragraph text that i wanted to put in here and i aligned it with this one image here so it's not a precise grid that i set up ahead of time but when you're working you can just you want to line things up so they're not just random so if i had put this over here and it's up a little and um, maybe one of these is over and one isn't. It's just a little crazy. So it's nice to tidy things up. You know, one, one of the things I could do is perhaps align it with this and bring it down lower. You can see the little line that, um, pink line that shows up aligning it underneath that text and I can bring it out to go right into that spot too. Um, now, when I look at that, if I like the way that looks, I think this is a little tight here. So what I could do, oops, sorry about that, is I could um, play with my margin. So maybe I decide that I want to move this margin up a little. So when you put in a guideline in Illustrator, it's automatically locked. See the way I can't move that? So you would go up to View, Guides, Unlock Guides, you can move it up a bit, and then you can go back to locking your guides again. And the reason why you want to lock your guides in Illustrator is because if you go and grab a bunch of things and you move them, the guides, well, I guess I left that locked, let me, guides, unlock guides. If I go and I grab something, it moves the guides with me. So in InDesign, the guides will move um, when you move the arrow without having to unlock them, but if you group something and move, they stay in the same spot, which I actually like better than the way they work in this program. But it's what we got to work with. So um, then I can, oops, I'm going to show my guides. I accidentally hid my guides. Guides, show guides. Um, so then I can raise this up a bit. 
maybe I'll make this one go above that guide and this one right below it, okay? It's probably too tight up there, but I would could readjust it. Um, the other thing that I want <clears throat> to show you is alignment. So this paragraph text, because it's paragraph text, I wanted it aligned left. I like that clean edge that it provides. But here I have the word Las Vegas in here, and I want it centered in this box. So I have clicked centered. Again, whatever I need seems to appear. Okay, so I am going to make this white because I want it to show up in my box so I can go over here and make it white. And then I can um, copy and paste for each one of my cities here so that I, um, or if I put all the text in, I could just use the eyedropper to make them all even. But see here we've got New York. So some of my cities might be longer, so I might have to change everything. And this was Barcelona. London and Boston. Okay, so New York City is too big. So if I select this and I go back to my text here and I make it smaller so it fits, that's 21. So then I can grab this, 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 and then use the eyedropper and all of them will size to that. And then I can grab them all, I can make one line up with the baseline if I want them to do that, and I might not because I have them all upper and lower case, so they don't really work so well that way. And then I can do a line at the base. So um, I wrote this text here, so now I want to do spell check. So I'm going to go up to edit, spelling, and do spell check. So I'm sure you guys have done spell check before. So I just want you to remember to do that. Um, and so there you have it, okay? So then you are going to save your file. So when you save a file, it automatically saves it as a .ai file. And that is the most stable version um, so I'm going to say my cities, and then I save it. So it's Illustrator AI, so I save it. Now, if you remember when you were working in InDesign, when you wanted to make a PDF, you would have to go up into File and to Export. Well, here are your export options in um, Illustrator. So you'd say export as, and it gives you options, okay? But PDF is not there. The thing about Illustrator, which is very nice, is that you can save it as a PDF, okay? So it saves it as an EPS, which is also a very good file size, um, very good resolution and good quality safe file. Um, and it's compatible with a lot of um, vector-based programs. And then the PDF is great because you can save it. Save. And so then the unique thing about a PDF is that you can go back in and grab a PDF that somebody sends me. So you guys, if you send me a PDF, I can go in and I can look at it. I can go in and manipulate things except I won't be able to um, find your images unless you embed them. So I'm going to show you that. So here is the link for all of your images. And so, oops. So you can look here and you can select your image. Sorry, I'm having troubles today. Um, and you could embed that image. And so then if I do a 
search, if I say um, show embedded, it just shows that one. If I say show missing, there are none that are missing. Show all. So I want you for this assignment to embed your images so that I can see your images. Sorry, I meant to say embed. Oh, sorry. All right, I'm going to show all again. Sorry. Show all. <clears throat> and um, I hit sit. Uh, show embed instead of make embed. <clears throat> it looks like I need to do one at a time. Sorry. So I am going to embed. 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 And embed. So then when you upload your file, I will be able to open your PDF <clears throat> and see all of your um, images still. Okay? Good luck. Have fun. You know, do something wild. I just did this, you know, really quickly and um, with, you know, just random. But um, if there's something that you're really passionate about, make an infographic out of it. Email me and let me know what you're thinking about and, um, and I can approve it for you. Okay? Take care.